valued viewers, I hope you are all doing very well. Today's poll question is, what was your favorite experimental locomotive type? Let me know in the comments below. Today's video is about the Chesapeake and Ohio Experimental M1 Steam Turbine Locomotive. When the skies darkened for advocates of steam power on American railroads, there were attempts made by some of our railroads to combat the high thermal efficiency argument of the diesel locomotive. Especially in the eastern portions of the United States, coal was cheap and the supply was high, so recourse was made to some new technologies uh, with which to match the diesel with, or at least attempt to. And for the Chesapeake and Ohio Railroad, this brought to mind the steam turbine. In their minds, this was a possible motive uh, source of power, and one that showed decided thermal advantages over the conventional type of steam locomotive boiler system. Turbines had been tried in Europe already, and, and the thermal efficiency had proven their point while burning coal as a fuel source. We have already seen how the Pennsylvania Railroad tried to do the job with their T1 locomotives, and if you haven't seen that video, uh, I recommend it uh, once you've completed this one. Anyhow, the point being that neither the Pennsylvania Railroad, or for that matter, any other American Railroad, ordered a similar turbine-driven locomotive. Nevertheless, those advocating for uh, steam turbines uh, became quite strong, and at that time, the Chesapeake and Ohio uh, were smitten by it. So, in between 1947 and 1948, the Chesapeake and Ohio got themselves three steam turbine electric locomotives from Baldwin. And these locomotives operated on a Westinghouse steam turbine of the Ford Impulse type, and they could produce 6,000 horsepower. And that was at 6,000 revolutions per minute. The turbine drove four 1,000 kilowatt DC generators, which through suitable control equipment fed current to eight axle hung traction motors. The Chesapeake and Ohio officially designated these three experimental locomotives as the M1 class and steam uh, for these locomotives was supplied by a locomotive type boiler uh, with a working steam pressure at 310 uh, pounds per square inch. But the European railroad companies had already learned that the steam turbine was great in uh, perfect uh, situations like uh, stationary power plants and um, steamships and whatnot. However, in a locomotive, the story was very different. And that's simply because in a railroad setting, the operating conditions are way different and way more unpredictable or even unstable uh, in certain areas uh, in which they operate. And the steam turbine was just compromised in its ability to produce consistent power enough in that environment. And for the life of me, I can't figure out why the Chesapeake and Ohio ordered three of these locomotives were simply ordering one to do their experimenting with would have sufficed and they would have found uh, these bugs and kinks, you know, in it and just bent out the cost of that locomotive. But they ordered three of them and, well, it didn't work out so great. And furthermore, to my knowledge, only the Southern Pacific with their cab forward variant of the Yellowstone got away with ordering locomotives before, you know, even trying them. So in a nutshell, the Chesapeake and Ohio got the three of them, they tried them, and they hastily scrapped them. Thus bluntly end the sad story of the uh, Chessies' attempt to stave off complete takeover by diesel power. I mean, seemingly it ended just as fast as it started uh, with this experiment. And the first major issue with the M1s was the design was just mechanically overly complex. Uh, during the initial test in 1947, the 500 experienced a variety of problems. Part of the issue was the turbines themselves, which, while practical in ocean settings, uh, in a railroad setting, uh, it just simply could not tolerate the heavy jarring action and heavy beating that you would experience in a railroad service. And then there was a pretty good problem of dirt, dust, and other uh, particles getting into the uh, equipment, and that was including the traction motors themselves. Baldwin and uh, Westinghouse were the builders of the M1 locomotive, and they had always claimed that the M1 would require less maintenance uh, via 
fewer moving parts and greater fuel savings. You know, the the Chesapeake in Ohio was unable to operate the locomotives from Washington to Cincinnati without mechanical problems. And that alone negates any savings that the uh, Baldwin Locomotive Works in Westinghouse had claimed that the railroad would save. You know, but nonetheless, uh, with millions of dollars invested in these three locomotives in 1948, the railroad uh, promoted the new Chessie uh, passenger service by parading the an exhibition train led by, of course, the M1 around the entire uh, Chesapeake and Ohio railroad system. And the public relations endeavor allowed folks to tour the equipment during stops at various towns and cities. And unfortunately, the train never entered service despite the millions spent on the new locomotives and the matching cars. The CNO had actually wanted the Chessie running by 1946, uh, but the large backlog of post war orders delayed delivery of the uh, matching cars. Uh, for two years, at which point there was also declining ridership, and with all the mechanical problems, the Chesapeake and Ohio just decided to end the entire concept then and there. And when the uh, matching Pullman cars did arrive, uh, the Chesapeake and Ohio just simply uh, sold them or used uh, the cars uh, on the railroad's other services. And as for the locomotives themselves, the CNO just simply sent them back to Baldwin and Baldwin had finally scrapped them in 1950. And once again, there wasn't any foresight to save one of these locomotives because they're rather historic. I mean, they were a prototype and one should have been uh, preserved. You know, seems like to me it would have been a perfect piece uh, for the, something like the Smith, uh, Smithsonian or something like that. Let me know in the comments below if you think the M1 uh, was deserving of something uh, like that. At least one of them anyway, uh, preserved in like a Smithsonian type environment. And even though the M1s did not deliver on their promised operational efficiency, they did represent a significant chapter in American railroad history. And in the least, they spurred uh, more uh, interest uh, by the railroads themselves uh, with implementing uh, uh, technical advancement and new innovations and to this day of course we as railroad fans uh, still talk about them you know fairly regularly so with that the following specifications apply to the chesapeake and ohio's m1 steam turbine locomotive the overall length uh, of the m1 was 154 feet and three quarter inches the total locomotive weight was 857,000 pounds uh, the drivers were 40 inch drivers, uh, the fuel type was coal, the fuel capacity was 29 and a quarter short tons, the water capacity was 25,000 US gallons, the boiler pressure was 310 uh, pounds per square inch, the maximum speed was 100 miles per hour, the power output was 6,000 horsepower at 4,470 kilowatts, and 400, or I'm sorry, uh, 4,960 horsepower at 3,700 kilowatts on the generators. Um, the locomotive numbers were number 500 through the 502. It had a nickname called the Sacred Cow. They first ran in 1947 and they last ran in 1949 and they were scrapped by Baldwin in 1950. And the railroad designation was Mike 1. And with that, I'll wrap up the video, and I shall thank you for watching the video. If you enjoyed today's content, please hit the subscribe button. Uh, hit the like button as it helps the channel grow. And turn on all of, all of your notifications. And if you wish to help support our channel, please visit our print shop at Nickel Plate Limited on Etsy.com. And we thank you once again.